Our next guest was a 20-year-old college student playing three different sports and in great health, but one day that all changed. She suffered a stroke. She joins us on Skype. Please welcome Sarah to the show. Sarah, so good to see you smiling and doing so well. But I, I want to just briefly go back to that day so you can tell people a little bit about what that day was like for you and the warning signs you may or may not have had when it came to your first stroke. I was sitting in math class a week before finals in my sophomore year of college, and I started to feel very dizzy and disoriented and you know couldn't figure out what was going on. Uh, I thought I was just tired. Uh, the girl sitting next to me said, I think he just had a seizure. And I said, absolutely not. There's no way. I'm incredibly healthy. You know, we left class. I tried to walk, and I started to lose feeling in the right side of my body and started to lose my balance. And I was still very dizzy and disoriented. I started to get a horrible migraine. And eventually, over time, um, you know, I started experiencing facial drooping, and I started to you know, get really concerned. And so I called my parents who um, just so happened to be medical professionals. And they, you know, they instantly, when I told them my symptoms, they said, you need to go to the ER immediately. So my brother um, fortunately lived close and he came and got me and we went to the ER. And all of a sudden, um, you know, I, I started to really struggle with my speech and I was trying to explain to the triage nurse that I desperately needed help. And, you know, she was telling me, there's no way you're having anything serious. You know, they're definitely not having a stroke. Um, you know, there is, and no you're offense, perfectly healthy. That's a, uh, for everyone, that's a, a, a bad triage nurse. If someone yeah. can't, you know, and I hate to say it, it's one of the reasons why we have Sarah on the show because strokes, can and do happen at any age. Very, you, you had a unique circumstance though, did you not? That you found out you were having a stroke due to a malformation that you had. Yeah, about a, I was misdiagnosed at first and it wasn't until about a year later that they figured out that I was born with a malformation in my brain called, called an arteriovenous malformation. And at that point, that's when they said, oh no, we should have had surgery. Now we know that this um, you know, is something that's gonna be an issue and could potentially cause another stroke. And just for people at home, we talk about strokes a lot. It is a lot like a heart attack for the brain where the part of the brain does not get blood supply. It can be an ischemic stroke, which is what we typically think of usually in older people who've developed vascular disease over time, but it can also be hemorrhagic due to a malformation, due to, you know, and, and what, what's the end point in all of this is your brain is not getting oxygen. When your brain doesn't get oxygen, not only does it not function properly, but you can lose capabilities for the rest of your life. That's why we talk about reacting so quickly to these things. I mean, Sarah had all the classic signs of, of a, a stroke event, that mnemonic FAST, F-A-S-T. She had, she had symptoms in her face, her, her arms, her extremities were weak. Ultimately, uh, she had slurred speech, classic. I'm just so glad that you're alive and doing well because in a case like that with a hemorrhagic stroke due to an AV malformation, you're just I'm so happy that you were able to get the surgery you ended up needing because there is a, a, certainly a risk for recurrence of this. And the other reason we talked about this or want to talk about is one in five women will have a stroke. Two times the rate of death from strokes as compared to breast cancer. And women are so aware of breast cancer, but they're not as aware of stroke. Right, and do you have any deficits at this point from the stroke? Um, do you have any physical limitations or mental limitations or anything? Um, I've been very fortunate to have two completely full successful recoveries. Sarah, it sounds like at a young age, you're really a proponent for raising awareness about this. Yes, I'm incredibly involved with the American Heart Association because it's not just the elderly, you know, it's not just people with that are overweight and heavy smokers. You know, this stroke can happen to perfectly healthy people at any age. Stroke does not discriminate, as I've found. And so I think it's so important to raise awareness and try to ensure that stroke happens to less people. Good for you. Keep up the great work.